What is up, peeps? So I just recorded this whole tutorial. My mic wasn't on the whole time, so I'm redoing it for y'all. But yeah, let's get started. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how I do my color grading. We're gonna be working on this photo. Just to start with the theory, uh, this is gonna sound weird, it's a little tangent, but my whole theory on color is when you look at a black and white photo, your eye and your brain is forced to look at the whole photo. When you look at a color photo, your eye picks out different colors and different points of a picture, and you focus on different little points within the photo. But again, when it's black and white, your eye looks at the whole thing. You're looking at the composition, the shapes, and the light within the photo. So when I do my color grading, I try to limit the colors as much as possible. Basically make it a black and white photo, but within a few colors. With that said, let's talk about color theory real quick. I know you guys wanna to get to the juicy part, but let's talk about this real quick, because this is very important. So if we look at the photo, there's a lot of reds in there. I mean, the couch looks orange, but I'm probably gonna push that all to red, again, to limit the colors. So let's look at what the opposite of red is in complementary colors so you see the opposite of red is this green but say if you want to add another color into there because again like i said i like to add three to four different colors so if the main color is red you see it's pushing it towards blue and green now i don't like these hues at all the hues of these colors are bleh. so i'm gonna take the artistic decision to manipulate those colors but they're all gonna be within the same palette so yeah let's get started so i use uh, adobe bridge i go into adobe camera Raw, and then i will go into photoshop after this i'm shooting with the fuji film xt20 as you see up here it says right there so a lot of the times i will go in and when you open up a raw file i don't know if y'all know this but if you go to camera calibrations it forces your photo into adobe standard and it flattens the whole photo out if you really like the colors of your camera and how it looks in the back of your camera go through here and it will have your camera's color profiles in here i always go through and i choose the provia standard and it's supposed to mimic the fuji provia film so yeah i'll start off with choosing camera profile and again so our three colors was red blue and green and so i think what i'm going to do is i want to put blues into the shadows and greens in the highlights i will go through here and start messing around i'm trying to get the skin tones perfect within here while also getting my final colors that mess with the red to kind of push everything more and more red and with every photo these adjustments do so many different things there's really like no precise way of doing this there's no set setting or some like magical setting then after that i will go through into my uh tone curve so the difference between the the point curve and the parametric curve i think that's how you say it i don't know is with the point curve you could go in and you could precisely do little adjustments and with the parametric uh you can go through and it's a little more uh user friendly i guess you could say i'm gonna go down to my blue uh curve adjustments and i'm going to lift the shadows and you see it makes the whole photo a little too magenta so i'm going to go in the mids and i'm going to crush it back down i'm going to warm it up a little bit then i'm gonna lift the shadows up again and then i'm gonna go to my greens and remember again i said there's a lot of red in this photo so i want to put blue in the shadows and green in the highlights i'm gonna lift this up right here and you see it makes the mid-tones a little gross and too greenish so i'm gonna crush that now the whole overall photo is actually a little bit too red for me so i'm going to make points so the whole photo isn't affected and then i'm gonna go and just crush the blacks a little bit maybe i'll do it from here and you see there's still a little bit of green in the shadow so i'm gonna go and Take a little more of those out. All right, so we're getting somewhere. I hate how the contrast looks right now, so I'm actually going to go in the parametric and I'm going to crush the highlights a little bit and pop them out in the lights. Lift the blacks. So again, there's no like precise way of doing this. For every photo, it's different. So I just go through and I play with everything. So you see her skin's a little blown out. So I'm actually gonna go into my exposure settings and drop the highlights a little bit. And you see that just brought it back. I'm gonna go back to my selective coloring and I wanna make it pop a little more. I wanna make the highlights in her skin pop and the, her, the fur in her jacket pop. So I'm gonna lift the yellows up a little bit. So as you can see, there's yellows within her jacket and so i'm gonna go through and i'm gonna pump them up and that just adds a little sheen to it so after i'm done with all of that i say split toning for last that's split toning is where if i can't get the final look in there i could usually go and split toning and push it a little more to the edge of what i want so again i want blues in the shadows so i'm just gonna pump that up the whole overall photo a little too blue so i'm going to go and push my balance towards the highlights a little more so it's making the adjustment only stick in the shadows mostly let's go through our basic adjustments pop the contrast a little more her hair is getting kind of lost in the blacks there so i'm going to lift it up a little bit 
Lift it up in the shadows. For clarity, I really don't use clarity too much. Like I, if I do, I usually lower it to soften it to get a little more of a hazy look. That's just like what I like. But yeah, from here, so from here, I would open up in Photoshop. All right, so when I open in Photoshop, this is where I start making fine adjustments. Like some people might be happy with the look that they, they got within Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. But to me, my this is sticking out to my eye, how the couch is red and these currents are kind of like purple. So I'm going to go through my selective coloring and I'm gonna paint that in. I'm gonna adjust it and paint it in. So I'm gonna go to my magentas, I'm gonna pump up the yellows in them. So you see that automatically push it to red. I actually made the whole overall photo a little more red and I kind of like that. So you see when I turn this on, it's kind of killing the mid range of the sh of the shadows. It's killing the blues out of it. I don't know if you can really see that, but like the blues right here, if you turn that on, it kind of kills them out. I know it's like a micro little thing, but to me it makes a world of a difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this layer. I'm going to go to right here, this underlying layer. I'm going to click option and I'm going to drag this. What this does is this takes this layer and it takes the effect off of the shadows. So see, it's just affecting the mid range now. But as you see, I got sidetracked right there because it made the overall adjustment better to what I wanted. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my selector coloring, go back to magentas, pump that yellow up again. I'm gonna click Command I. That's going to take the whole effect away. I'm gonna get my pen tool. You could do this with a mouse, but I'm obsessed with my pen tool. And I'm going to paint it in into the areas that I want adjusted. So I'm just going to paint over this paint over that bandana. I put that bandana on there because I had a light over her because it was we were like in some vintage RV and um, my camera couldn't focus unless I had some kind of light. So I had to keep that on. But I kept it dimmed by putting that over it. So now you see everything's pretty much red. Um, I kind of don't like how this is really dark. So another thing I'm going to do is going back to my selective coloring, stay in the magentas and then I'm going to lift the blacks. And you see what it does. It lifted this whole area, but it lifted everything else too. Gonna lift these yellows. Make it a little more red again. Try to bring all that back. And then Command I again, and then I'm just going to paint back in this region. And you see it's bringing everything up. And then I will do one more select the color adjustment because you see it made it purple again. So I'm just gonna make it red again. Command I paint it back in. Now I'm going to group all these adjustments together so we can see what we did. So you see, we just made everything red, but to me, it makes it, I don't know, like I'm, when you look at this, you're focusing on her, which is cool. But I want you to look at my whole photo. When you make it red, all of a sudden, look, you're looking at the whole photo now and she's a part of it. But another thing you see is a lot of the blues in the shadows went away so I'm going back in my curves adjustments and I'm gonna add those blues back in so in the shadows and I'll crush them down right here and then I will lower the opacity to that because I don't want it too strong and then you see the yellows in her skin there's a little too much yellow in there and it's kind of like making her a little too uh, flat so I'm going to my yellow adjustments and I'm going to lift the blacks and you see that just add a little more pop to her skin Last thing I'm going to do is mess with the contrast a little bit, make her pop a little more, lift the blacks a little bit. Anytime you lift the blacks, it automatically gives it like a more uh, vintage vibe to it. And I'm going to lower that opacity and pump it up a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this is when I will spend an hour on a photo because I'll just keep making micro adjustments. And to most people, you know, they're, they wouldn't care. I mean, it's, it looks fine how it is, but I don't know. My eyes just like get stuck. Uh, so what I just did right there is I went to the greens, I lifted the highlights, when the blues lift the highlights. So I'm gonna go back into that trick, double click the layer, and I want it just in the highlights. So I'm going to click option and drag this. And this is gonna take it off all the shadows. And if you drag this all the way up, it's just gonna be the highlights. Just right there. So you see that just added like some greenish bluish tint into the highlights, making it pop a little more. So yeah, that's uh, how I do my color grading. I'm gonna make a bunch of videos, I think, about color grading because it's different from every photo. I don't like doing the same look on every photo. I drive it on what's the scene, what's the clothing, what's the vibe supposed to be, and I create the complementary colors off of that. So this one, I lit this one with a soft box with no diffusion on it, so it popped her, her highlights on her skin a little more. And it's indoors, like I don't shoot indoors a lot. So yeah, now I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to make another one on how I retouch this. For now, do all the basic YouTube stuff. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. Uh, let me know what you guys 
think let me know if you think i'm trash or if you think i'm doing okay you know uh so yeah guys peace